In the server script, get the teleport service. As always, any asynchronous function that I mention in this video should be wrapped in a p-call so you can error handle. The most important function is teleport async. Other teleport functions are deprecated, so use this one instead. Teleport async has two required parameters and one optional. The two required are the place ID of the place you're trying to teleport to and an array containing all of the players you want to teleport to that place. Let's say I have a place ID of zero and want to teleport a player with a user ID of zero to this place. But what about teleport options? Let's make a new instance of them. There are three properties of this object that we want to look at. Should reserve server, which is automatically set to false. If this is true, it will put the players you specified into a place by themselves. So I'll just set this as false. And then there's a reserved server access code. This is useful for things like matchmaking systems. It makes a place instance that isn't joinable from the outside. For example, friends can't follow them in how they usually would. You can get the reserved server access code by the member function of the teleport service, reserve server. Once again, you need to put the place ID of the server you want to teleport into here, which just for example at the moment is place number zero. Sometimes you can get what we call a server instance ID, which is similar to the reserved server access code, but the server that has the instance ID does not necessarily have to be reserved. This is good for things like making a system where friends can join each other's servers. Putting any job ID in here for this place would work. But these three properties are mutually exclusive, so you can only use one at a time. Otherwise, an error will be thrown. Then, on the client side, hold up. Let me tell you about Honey Game. An app that you can use to get passive income, which you can receive with PayPal or crypto, literally just by running it. It works by allowing you to share your unused bandwidth, whether that's mobile data or normal, and you get paid for it. You can download on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android and iOS. But surely that must be sketchy, right? Nope. Honeygain only allows trusted third parties to use your network such as businesses that are trying to access the internet in your location for purposes like research and circumvent geographical restrictions. While I'm not sponsored by Honeygain, if you use my affiliate link in the description, you'll get $5 for free and you'd also be supporting the channel, which I'd appreciate a lot. Let's get back to the video. We can also do some stuff with the teleport service. Although the actual teleporting is reserved for the server, you can't call it from a client. One of the things we can do is handle what happens when a player joins the game from teleporting to it. So we just connect a function to the event. Sorry, this script actually has to be replicated first. So it's one of the first things that is loaded because otherwise the script might not work properly. Here you can basically do whatever you want when the player has joined the game from a teleport, but you'll have the custom loading GUI that your player has seen passed to this event as an argument. And you'll also have a data table. I'll explain what both of these are. The loading GUI will only be a thing if before teleporting the player, you have set set teleport GUI, which will be any screen GUI that you want the player to see during teleportation. Now, as it says local user here, you should only use this on the client. To get this loading GUI, you can also do teleport service get arriving teleport GUI. The data table contains anything that you have passed as a teleport setting. For example, you can set teleport settings. Let's say I wanted a setting to say what position the player was in before being teleported. And then I can just put the vector 3 of the position of the player in here. If I did this before the teleportation, what I could then do is get the teleport. 
default setting of position and then use it how I need to. But like I said, you can do the same thing with data table. Now, because these teleport settings can only be accessed from the client, please don't put anything sensitive in here, like how much money the user has, because anything client side can be manipulated, so don't take it as 100% true, otherwise you'll be vulnerable to hackers. Now, get player place instance async will return the place ID and job ID of the server of the player with this user ID. So for example, if I wanted to get that, I could do local place ID, job ID, and then I could use this if it exists as a server instance ID for my TV options. This can be used to allow one player to join in. There's one more event that you should know about, and that is teleport init failed. This will be triggered whenever the teleport async is not successful. For example, you can print not successful. And these are the things that you'd be able to get. The player, the result of the teleport, and the error message. If you just create these parameters, which you can automatically do with anonymous autofill. But I personally wouldn't use this event. I just handle the errors with a p-call because you're already supposed to wrap everything asynchronous in a p-call. I hope I've been able to help you with this video. If I have, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you want an example of how to use the teleport service, stay tuned because in a couple of days I will be making a video applying a lot of concepts that I have recently covered and you don't want to miss it because this is a way you can boost your game in algorithm and get more Robux as premium payouts. Stay tuned. I wish you well on your development journey. Until next time.